We do feel the obvious things first. A few big payoffs. So I don't know all the goblin stuff. I could I could do goblins and I have to craft a bunch of their stuff and I'm not really gonna do that. I'm trying to I'm trying to do something that's good and cool. You know, I know this kind of creatures, yeah. We'll do um Colorado, we'll do Rekindling Phoenix too. I don't really play red that much, unfortunately. But I think Red's kind of weak. Let's go to the battlefield this turn. Yeah. I'm going to set her back. Okay, yeah, I do. I was looking for this guy. This guy's basically like questing beast, except he's red. He's good in his own way. I really want to say one is better than the other. I think Battle Driver. The Gold Spin. I'm trying to think if I want the Haste Givers, because they don't they don't do anything if everything already has haste, and they're just kind of a waste. Um, yeah, I heard brass. Heard brass. I mean, the top ability is really nice. It's not like we have to have everything hot paste, right? I don't want to play that unless we're playing a lot of adventure. I think we'll load. If the Ceratops is a solid card. Yeah, this card's not, it's just Steady Tortoise. I don't remember that guy, because he can, he can just set an event out of, like, the Adventure Zone. Well, Exile. And he'll just keep getting stronger as you keep attacking. Kind of, like, almost unfair. <laughs> it's, honestly, it's pretty nice. And we'll probably get a little bit of cheaper answers. I to play some cards I haven't played in a minute. Like, Brush Girl Elemental, that card's really solid. Yeah, I'm here, thank you for your time, I really do appreciate it. Hold on, let me switch over to Arena's sound, forgot about that. I was playing my music before. That was, I listened to Arena most of the night. Make sure that's working, yeah. I'll switch over to some of my music later. That's all I have a question, put them in the chat box. Frocky Mets. I think Frocky Mets, he's a good, he's pretty good at spreading our backs. This part's pretty sweet, actually. 
the dead, we don't have to have everything. Let's work with that. Improved prices intervention. That's, that's probably the best intervention, also. Improved prices. The three that runs really bad. One of the best red removal spells. And then we're back again. Totally a flame. I don't know Actually, really good at this last phase. That can draw us three cards. And this. Yeah, we'll just get a root torture. Because those can draw us. That can draw us a ton of cards if that thing is out. Or our commander is out. That's the Legion War Boss. War Boss can draw us a card every turn if our commander is out. That Light of Flame can be two. And I don't think I'm going to do the Haste and Ramblers. I think most of our guys are just going to have Haste. I did a few Anthems and thinking like, um, the one that's, uh, I think we'll do this because he's got kicker. So it can kind of stay a little bit more relevant throughout the game. King Street Doctor is pretty good. Really hard to actually do this. I'm going to buy two more bridges. I'm going to look at the green quick. I kind of want something. Well, let's see if I can start with I kind of want something that gives us a little bit of stats. Well, this guy kind of works as two bridges. There's a game under. Let's create all things too. I've never played that card before, so we'll try that. That's just a place. I will go with this. Because we need to start doing some more good stuff. What's the prime for two?
I think I'm at four bell board, but it's just because we have so much freaking haste. I 
Can somebody say something that we can play that video back again? It's not too much. All right. So this is our first test of this uh, gruel deck. It's pretty much just all the haste creatures in a ball with uh, some uh, the vizier not cutting or whatever, whatever the place is. And we're waiting for our opponent to mulligan here. We actually end up losing this one against Joseph Five. So that one was kind of eh, whatever. But our, our deck is not really that good because we're just jamming kind of a lot of the haste creatures. And the problem with haste is like, it's only good for one turn, right? It's not like it does anything after the first turn. Like, yeah, you can jam in damage right away. And it's good to pepper your deck with a few hasters, but making it entirely hasteless out of gruel is not really that great. If it was like maybe a different color combination for like playing like Boros or something, maybe some white, we could uh, do it. But right here we play the mountain, then we play Tin Street, send them, say go. All right, it's the Op's turn. Op plays a forest. Op plays Reese the Redeem. Pretty good card. He can make tokens and double tokens. Right here, we uh, send Tin Street Dodger, because we don't care. We prefer him to block, actually. Because like I said, we're, we're just rocking a lot of haste cards, which aren't super exciting. I think if I were to rebuild this deck, I would do the haste enablers. Anyways, our opponent taps two, plays Guardian Idol. Do like haste enablers and then like value town cards because it's brawl. You kind of need to play all the value engine cards. Any of the cards that are worth two cards in a slot, deck slot at least, type of cards. You know what they are. They're like the Adelines and all the other cards that give you like the big mid rangey threats that all generate a butt ton of value. There's a perfect example in Scoot Swarm right there. As our opponent plays Scoot Swarm, plays the land, gets the insect token. They aren't at the magic number of six lands where they make another Scoot Swarm. We're thinking here, and I'm... We go ahead and send some Mutt, and they block. Boom, kill the, kill the insect. We go ahead and play the removal here. We accidentally misclick. Go ahead and play the removal here because we need to get rid of Scoot Swarm before it gets out of control and then we can't deal with it anymore. Well, I guess we could. We're red. Red's actually pretty good at dealing with that card. But then it's, then it's on to them. They're thinking, thinking, thinking. Crack the land. Fable Passage, pretty good. Decent rare if you play a lot of Brawl. You play a lot of multicolored lists. Good pickup. You'll never, you'll never complain. Untaps, the land comes in, it's basically just evolving wilds, except it comes into play untapped if you have four or more lands. Including itself, so. They play God Eternal Catcher here, that kind of signs our doom right here. Because God Eternal Catcher is really hard for us to deal with. Because A, we're red, so they got six, it's got six toughness, so that's like two removal spells. And it's God Eternal, so they are actually really good against removal. So it's really only a matter of time here. It starts really starting to slip away from us as it goes downhill. They go Helm of the Host. You know, again, value town card. Big value plays. That's the problem with our deck in, in this iteration of it, is we don't really have too many big value plays. Voice of Resurgence. When he dies, he makes a token that is as big as your team. So if you have five creatures, he's a 5-5. Five, five. Pretty simple stuff. We go ahead and drop Ogre Battle Driver. He gives any creature that comes into play 2-0. I think he gives him haste as well. So I think he would stay in the deck. Like, because when you're playing Brawl, you need to play all the value cards. Goes ahead and uh, quits the Helm of the Host. Because we probably should have, we could have uh, showered of arrows there. That's Broken Wings, except it scries. So if you know what Broken Wings does, you know what Shower of Arrows does. Probably should have killed that there, but we decided to develop the board instead. I mean, we're pretty doomed from this point anyways, so it doesn't really even matter. So, we go ahead and play Rekindling Phoenix here. Very awesome mid rangey card. Uh, he, he basically is a flyer. He's a 4-3. And then when he dies, as long as he's in your graveyard, he'll leave an egg behind. And then once the egg hatches, you bring him back from your graveyard. Is how he works. But he, he needs to, the card physically needs to be in your graveyard, though. 
So if, you, if your graveyard gets exiled, he doesn't come back. You just keep the egg. And I think if you can't bring him back, I think the egg sticks around. We got Yoshiro and Kogla here, which actually we probably maybe would have been a better ship, like I said, if we would have taken out the Helm of the Host. They go ahead and play Nightpack Ambusher here. This card's pretty meh in this situation because Nightpack Ambusher is a really, you gotta build around it. But them having two God Eternal Ketras getting out the 4-4 four, four Vigilances every turn, that's gonna be really hard for us to start dealing with, especially can't because we don't have something big enough to stave them off, right? Here we're thinking, thinking, we block, we block one, we block the 4-4 four, four Vigilance with our Shifting Ceratops. Lose the Ceratops, get hit for six, three double strike, damage. Play Yoshiro and Kogla. We fight one of the God Eternal Ketchels. We fight the uh, token, because then they can't come back. Because otherwise they just get shuffled back into the deck. And we send him on his way. They die here. Yeah, they get blocked off by a Vigilance guy. Fortunately, they only have five, four toughness left. And then Voice of Resurgence comes by. Because we, we, we had to start getting in damage somehow. We could have sat, twiddled our thumbs. I mean, we were pretty much done for at this point anyways. They already have resell. They have six mana, so they can double their tokens. It was really only a matter of time, like I said before, that we were just not in the position to be winning this game. Again, this is a, this is, we got two wins and two losses throughout this video. If I were to make revisions to this list, I would do the value turn cards and haste enablers, do like Perforos, Battle Driver, any of the cards that give haste, uh, Invigorating Hot Springs is one. Uh, there's another one too, it's the old Riot card, uh, if you know what that card is. But that's, a, that's another one, you just gotta look it up. It's a three mana enchantment, gives all your creatures riot, which riots just better haze. And yeah, that's, that's definitely what I would do. And kind of treat your commander as like a draw two sometimes. You drop your commander, maybe like a three drop or a four drop you can give haste to, you know? And kind of treat them as like a draw two. Or just play a different commander entirely. Because Brawl, is very in any sort of commander game really is you got to expect it to be battle cruisery you got to expect that your games are going to go long your games are gonna you know all unless you're getting your combo off right away you lose like right here we lose because our deck doesn't have any staying power all right this is game two we actually win this one and we'll go over why we win and even, even surprisingly, surprisingly enough, enough, our opponent goes first, first, and we still, and win. We still win. This is against Arietti of the Charmed Arietta Apple. Apple. This deck was kind of a little bit of a slugfest, but we kind of stuck it out. Because we do, I guess we have a little bit of value town in this card, in this deck. Like, we got, like, Great Henge and stuff like that. You know, draw, enabler, slash, like, cards that give you a little bit of extra seeing power. We play the Vachino right here. I can't remember his name right now, but... He's pretty cool. He's pretty cool. Yeah, I think he's Vachino Blanche Walker. He can, he can give himself give kicker and come out as a 3 3. That's basically what he does. They play the Enchantment Dog, uh, draw a card. We contemplate on playing the Yavamata Iconoclast, but we end up not doing so at this current point in time. He's pretty cool. He's actually really cool. He's a 3 2 with Trample, or you pop a red into him for three mana, you play him as a Gruel 1. And he was 4-3 uh, uh, with Trample and Haste. Trample and haste. So he's actually he's a pretty actually cool, a card. cool card. Cool little cool uncommon. uncommon. I think he might he even be a little bit like historic, historic playable. playable. They play Arietti. What she does she is if does she, she, if you have auras, auras out at the end of the turn, you drain for the amount of auras out. So if you have one aura, it's drain one. If you have two auras out, you know, drain two, etc., etc. And if you put auras on your opponent's creatures, they can't attack you. So she's, like, so she's better, like better in, like, physical, like physical commander with four, with players. four players. But in Brawl, Brawl she is, she is I'd, say like I'd say, like, B tier. Like maybe B high B tier, high, tier, high A, or, or lower A tier. tier. She isn't she super isn't exciting. I've played her a few times. I still haven't quite still haven't gotten her down yet, down yet, but, yet, but like I said, she's not she's ultra not exciting because you're still kind of playing some sometimes lackluster removal. If you're up against a deck that's, like, 
runs a lot of passive abilities, then she she starts to fall apart pretty easily. Anyways, we uh, go ahead and uh, blow up the enchantment there with Return to Nature. Drop 10 Street Dodger. 10 Street Dodger has haste and then can't be blocked by creatures with haste if you put one mana into them. It's any color too, so it's pretty nice. Then they go ahead, it's their turn, they play a land, play Ethereal Armor, that card's absolutely insane. Gives first strike, it's first strike and it counts the amount of enchantments you have. So it's like, so it's think like, of uh, all, all that glitters, glitters except it doesn't count doesn't artifacts, count artifacts though. though. So, so that's something you got to keep in mind. But swells it's a creature. Swell it's, creature. Only it's, creature. it's only one mana. It's pretty unfair, unfair actually. actually. Then we go ahead and play Uvenwald the Oddity. Uvenwald. Uven. Send him. He's a 4-4 that you can pop some mana into, and then he turns into an 8-8 that gives your entire team team 1-1 in haste. Sounds like Ovenwald like Nightmare. Nightmare. I can't remember his, can't name. Remember his name. He's a rare. He's, he's pretty, pretty cool. He's from the Innistrad, Innistrad set. set. I think the, I think second, the second one, not the first one. First one. They, play they play another enchantment, another enchantment here. here. It's another, it's buff, another buff, buff enchantment. enchantment. I didn't catch, I the, didn't name catch the name of it. You'll, You'll see it in the video, video though. though. They gain two they life, gain two drain, life drain, drain us for two, us for then two, they say go. We play Great Henge, which this is important here because that little bit of life gain that we get off this card actually matters like a whole bunch. It matters peaches and bunches. Bunches of peaches. Go ahead and play the Iconoclast here. Get two life, draw a card, play a mountain. We're holding up Bolt, feeling good about our life. Let our dog outside, you know. We didn't actually do that, but we might. We felt that good about life. Go ahead and plow through the dog. Because acorn becomes tree. Yeah, their, their enchantment allows them to sacrifice dog and gain flying. But we got trample, so it, our damage can't be ignored. Plays land, plays the plains. Plays the pilgrim guy. He's... Uh, uh, he like gains he, like, life when your life creatures come into play, and your play your opponents your lose opponents life when they lose, lose creatures. creatures. They opt, they to, hold opt to hold Arietti back. Back. back, and then we play there and, and back, back, back again, which reads: first chapter, first chapter is creature, creature can't, can't block, block while you have there and back, back again. again. So we target their Arietti; she can't block. Then the second treasure, or a second part, I can't even remember the second part. Right now, the right third now. part is third you make a big dragon, dragon. Six, six six, and then when six, he dies, he gives you fourteen treasure tokens, tokens. which is pretty, which cool. Is pretty cool. We send the iconoclast, send the iconoclast and, and the branch walker because he's got death touch. Death touch. So, so we don't really we don't feel, feel like, like losing our Uven well, oddity. Uven. Uven. They play Adeline Resplendent Cathar. Cathar. Send Arietti. Make a 1-1. One, one. One, one. We block with Tin Street. Block with uh, Uvenwald, the 1-1. One, one. Oh, yeah. He searches for a library for your mountain and puts it on the battlefield. Untapped, by the way. That's huge, actually. That matters quite a bit sometimes. Anyways, there and back again triggers. We go grab our mountain. I'm pretty sure we just grab a basic mountain here. There's me talking, talking on, Twitch. on Twitch. By the way, you By can go way, to my Twitch at slackerwrite.com. Twitch.tv. I'll put it in the description. Back to the video. We are thinking here. Put down the Guardian Project. Wait for our opponent. Play the Battle Driver so we draw two cards. Because we got one from Great Henge and one from Guardian Project. You can you stifle can Guardian project, project by putting the card into the, the graveyard. So if you remove it while Guardian Project's on the stack, you can kill the card. So keep that in mind. If you kill the card while while the Guardian Project triggers on the stack, it'll cancel the trigger because it'll be in the graveyard. Transcendent Envoy makes enchantments cost one less of their auras. 
And it's a one-two flyer, pretty, flyer, pretty solid, solid card from Theros. From Theros. Black with Battle Driver, Black with a uh, Branch Rider. And then this and then this, this next turn is when we win. And here's how we win. We get Smog, the guy from uh, Lord of the Rings. When he dies, he gives you 14 treasure tokens. We bolt the bird. Because bird, 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 bird is the word. So we don't actually, we don't get, to actually get to swing in because, in because our opponent because our concedes, opponent concedes which they may as well because well, it's a waste of time to sit and not do it. Do it. All right, we played right, we Big Dumb Big Dragon Dumb number Dragon two, two, the second coming. Second coming. And, and as you can, can see, see, they concede. All right, the second match, we actually lose this one again. But this is up against Moon Shimon Man X. Moon Man X. Mushi man, moon chi man, man X. They're playing recently, or um, Alenda the dark dusk rose, and she's a pretty good commander. She is Orsova four drop, one white, one black too. Uh, basically, when creatures die, she gets one one counters, and when she dies, she produces the cre creatures one one lifelink vampires, based on how strong she is, based on her power. Uh, we send Ginger Brute their direction. Ginger Brute, he's a food column, so he can be not blocked by creatures with haste. I, I meant uh, with the Goblin 10th Street Dodger, he can't be blocked by things except with Defender. And uh, Ginger Brute can't be blocked except by haste. And then he can, he can food token himself, so pay to tap him, sacrifice, uh, gain three life. We opt not to send Ginger Brute here, which probably could, well, I don't think they would have blocked anyways. Maybe they would have, but it probably would have been good good for us here. This kind of signs our death warrant this turn. You'll see why here in a moment as the ball starts rolling and where we made the mistakes in life that we made for losing this game, which is fine. Like I said, this this list, I wouldn't recommend you build it. I'd recommend if you do build this commander, I'd play the haste enablers like again Perforos, Invigorating Hot Springs, the Riot card from uh, War of the Spark, or not War of the Spark, uh, the Ravnica before Roar of the Spark, and any sort of other haste enablers, Ogre Battle Driver, something of this nature. Because this commander, or you can play him as Voltron too, because he's got a good host of keywords. But then go ahead and play Wolf Strider, which he can freely sacrifice things and then you scry one. Most important thing about him is he's free. There, we pop Ginger Brute's ability for one mana. One colorless mana can't be blocked except by haste. Send him over. Send them both over. Because uh, Samat would be actually pretty good with Voltron stuff if you want to do like a gruel Voltron list. Kind of like pop pop a bunch of creatures in with keywords, give them pretty good equipment, send them on their way. Because he always, at face value, can probably draw you a card. But that's another way you can probably play the stack, too. Anywho, we go ahead and send Fool Golem their way. A uh, block. So much, but they can't block Food Golem. So then they say go. Or we say go. And then... They play Elena here. And... This is kind of like... Really where it starts to go downhill. Because we're holding up mana. And we should have probably... Maybe did the thing to the wedding announcement first. But you'll see what happens here. This is a trap. Waiting for them. And then they get their wedding announcement right back. Which is, like, pretty crazy. And we're kind of still waiting on them. Waiting on them. There's me, like, talking about it on Twitch. In the corner. On the corner, slang and playing some cards. On the corner, slanging, trying to play with some cards. 
Sending ginger brood over to punch you for one. Sending ginger brood over to punch you for one. Sending some out over to strike you for two. I'm the corner slaying. See, this is me singing. Anyways, their token died, so Elena gets bigger. And you'll see where we kind of went wrong here. Because we play Brotherhood's End. Which reads, it either deals 3 damage to each creature in Planeswalker, or it destroys all artifacts of mana value 3 or less. Or converted mana cost for us older. Older folks and ladies. You know, some of us have colostomy bags. Some of us have kids. Some of us went to college. All of us are all surprisingly old now, though. Because we use converted mana cost. Anyways, they sacrifice everybody for um, benefit by a woe strider. Elena gets bigger. She's a 7-7 seven, seven now. They play their Lolith. Make two spiders. And then we're just like, yeah, no. And we quit right here. Because she's too big. She's a 7-7 seven, seven with lifelink. We're a haystack. It's just game over at that point. Yeah. Alright, this next uh, player is playing AR. Winner of the round. Her effect is she can tap and sacrifice a creature or an artifact and she drains your opponent for whatever its uh, mana value is. And then you can pay 5 and 1 Phyrexian Red, transform her into Furnace Queen. And Furnace Queen, at the beginning of combat on your turn, return up to one target artifact or creature card from your graveyard. The battlefield only gains haste. Exile at the beginning, next end step. So she's like a reanimator drain commander. She's pretty cool. I'll probably make her, but as you saw in our first turn, we play a mountain, play a uh, ginger blue. Then second turn, we play reinforce Ronin. And she's a one mana two two, and he's got haste, but he bounces himself back to the hand. So he's like, like him and this commander are two peas in a pod. And you play them together. It's just the way that it is. They block here with the serrated scorpion. He drains for two when he dies. They play a deadly dispute on him, draw two, make a treasure, sacrifice a creature as an additional cost. It costs two mana. You've seen it before. They play nothing here. So, we play Scampering Scorcher, which I'd say is like a shoe into this deck as well. Because he makes, he himself counts as one, and he makes two elementals, so that's three. And then he gives all elementals haste. Because he doesn't have haste, he just gives himself haste. That's kind of important sometimes. Because certain cards like care about haste being printed on there. He doesn't actually have it printed on him. But that's like three card draws right there. Then they play Rada. That Rada's really cool. She's only an uncommon, so if you want to play like a little bit of like a more poppery commander game where you're playing a little bit lower power commanders. I think she's your ticket because she's still pretty strong. Like, strong enough to where, like, it's not a do-nothing commander, you know what I mean? Like, you're actually doing something with your commander. But anyway, she draws cards for creatures dying in combat. If your creatures die in combat, she draws you cards. And I'm pretty sure, don't 100% quote me on this, but I don't think she has to be participating in combat. Like, she doesn't have to attack. So, it's actually pretty cool. I will play Rekindling Phoenix Archer, and they play Leyline of the Void. Leyline of the Void is all cards go in the graveyards, your opponent's cards. They, if they go in the graveyards, they go in the exile instead. And then Rekindling Phoenix, you know him, you love him. He's a 4-3. When he dies, he goes to the graveyard, leaves a 0-1 egg behind. And if the egg doesn't die, he comes back. As long as he's in the graveyard. So if he gets exiled, he doesn't come back. They play Junji. When he dies, he can either cause your opponent to discard two, lose two life, or you return a non-dragon creature from your graveyard to, to the battlefield, and then you lose two. We move over to combat. Sent just Rekindling Phoenix. We probably could have sent Ginger Brute, but that doesn't matter.
They play a replicating right here. It's a bit late to ramp. Maybe they're trying to get like a board wipe out or something. But they play Pitiless Plunderer. Whenever a creature dies, you make a treasure token. That card's very easy to break. So he's definitely, if you play Arena, he's only an uncommon, so definitely pick him up. Because that card's absolutely nuts. And a lot of lists. This right here, we jam Fire Emancipation. Before we can swing, they give up. Because they're going to lose anyway. So. And that's the end of the video. Thank you for your time.